All right, seven years later, well, seven years and a few months since I did uh, give you a little tour of my hole in the wall. So let's get going. All right, so obviously here I have some cases, empty, uh, extra box in case I want to ship something out. And we'll cruise in and give you the uh, big picture. I'll go through some of this together. All right, so I'm going to start with my uh, tool chests. Uh, picked these up Home Depot. Uh, fairly inexpensive, but they're uh, good for keeping stuff in, obviously. You know, rock videos, cables, uh, pedal boxes, uh, camera, more cables. Uh, let's see. Uh, stickers and miscellaneous. Oh, a whole bunch of cables and some more mini pedals. And I forgot what was in this one. Oh yeah, a microphone and headphones and such. So, uh, yeah. Like I said, those are fairly inexpensive. You get them at Home Depot. Come in handy. Not just for tools anymore. All right, uh, there's some music books, a couple of mic stands, uh, clip-on tuners, and then we got some uh, rock board cables, patch cables, uh, and then that's a buffer unit, which I've got to uh, put on the new pedal board, which is a whole nother video. Uh, guitar hangers. Uh, I get these from uh, AMS, about 20 bucks a piece, but uh, I've had no issues with them at all. And uh, they last quite a while. Oh, there's my axe. I figured it was fitting. And so I got a room full of axes, and I might as well have another one, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a custom painted BC Rich guitar. Uh, interesting story behind that one. And maybe I'll have to do a little video on it. But anyway, I'll show you the headstock. There's a headstock up there. Okay, moving on. That's uh, Right to Rock, handwritten uh, lyrics from Ron Keel. And obviously, see, there's his signature there. And a uh, 45 of Right to Rock, along with a CD cover, which unfortunately you're getting a lot of reflections, which really sucks, but nothing I can do about that at the moment. Okay, moving on. There is my PV Vandenberg. Very nice guitar. And the funny thing is, all the guitars I've got, this one, I like the neck profile on this the best. Uh, plays really well. Easy to play. So there's that. Alright, moving on. Here is one of my pedal shelves. Which, go to the side here. Uh, most of what I've seen on YouTube they uh, use the wood shelves, but with as many pedals as I've got, um, I needed something that would hold up better over a period of time. So I went with, I'll give you a side profile here of it. I went with a uh, metal. So that's all metal. Holds up pretty good. Haven't had no issues yet. All right, and there's my PV uh, Viper 2 amp, and there's the foot controller for it. 
you know, some people would argue and say, oh, it's a crappy amp or whatever, but I get tones out of that that I have not been able to duplicate with pedals. Not yet, anyway. So I keep that around. All right, moving on. And there's my Orange Crush Pro combo amp. It's a 112. Very good sound. Um, if you can find the Pro version, go with that. As the uh, ones that don't actually have the Crush Pro label on there. Uh, they have a different speaker in them. The Crush Pros. The speaker in it's really good so just so you know all right there's my diamond f4 phantom amp tube amp and the matching cab ah, that thing's loud as shit <laughs> and needless to say i don't use it that often because of the size of the room all right there is my Seymour Duncan uh, little pedal amplifier, pedal board amplifier, I should say. But because it generates this, the amount of heat it does, I keep it away from the uh, pedal board so it can get good ventilation. Stay cool. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay. This one was definitely in my uh, first uh, videos. Uh, I'd modified it and so forth. Anyway, that's the uh, Squire Stage Master. I've had that since 97, 98, thereabouts. Uh, but there's a reference to it in the uh, original Hole in the Wall video, so you can check that out when you get the chance. All right, there is a Jackson guitar, which I need to restring. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's a, one of those custom jobs. Limited number with this finish. So there's that. Okay. And uh, this is just something silly. I had to have it. It just looked cool as hell. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Needless to say. Surprisingly, when this shipped, these aren't like razor sharp, but they're sharp enough to cut you pretty good. So, yeah, just one of those things. Pretty cool looking, huh? Alright, moving on. Okay, some wall doodads. Yes, that is the probably the most awesome female guitar player I've ever met. Just saying, she's she's hot. <laughs> okay, moving on. All guitars should have one of these. You know what it is? The pick of destiny. All right. Now we go into this. That is my modified TTK2 guitar, which if you go on to my Google Plus page and you scroll down through my post, you can see actual photos of when I was modifying it and what I did uh, to this particular guitar. But uh, I'll let you check that out for yourselves. There's the headstock. Alright. And then obviously chord charts. It's always good just to have that hanging around in case you need to look at it real quick. Uh, one chord that was not included on this that should have been, so I wrote it in right there. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, now here is my TTK1 guitar, 
which uh, Louis the Tone King modified himself and uh, sent it to me. And it works out pretty good. Very nice guitar. Someday I'm thinking uh, he's probably going to work a deal with uh, one of these uh, companies, maybe Acacia Guitars, for a TTK3. And we'll have to wait and see on that. All right. So as we walked in, I'm going to step back a few steps. Bear with me. Don't get too dizzy. All right. So obviously, you know, I think Dimebag is a very awesome guitar player. So yeah, I got this multi-panel unit put up on the wall for inspiration. Some days I just look at it and start saying, okay, time to jam. You know how it goes. All right, moving on. Okay. Mr. Michelangelo Badio. And he was nice enough to uh, sign that. Wish me a happy 50th birthday. And here... It's a guitar he used to play his Pantera melody uh, live on a webcast. This is the actual guitar used. Uh, let me see if I can pull this down. And he signed the back of the headstock for me. Really cool of him to do. So yeah, I don't play this one a whole lot. They haven't changed the strings. It's the original strings from when he used it. You know, felt funny about changing them. All right, uh, let's see what do we got here. That's a uh, Harley Benton seven string. Uh, I got that from Lewis the Tone King. Plays pretty good. All right, there's my Carbon 212 Legacy Cab. Benches 30s in it. And of course, you know, Milwaukee Shop Radio. When I just want to sit back here and veg out, listen to the radio. My S757 that I modified. And if you notice, the blue tape. Um... Uh, this particular SM57, the uh, metal cone on the end, spins and spins and spins. There's just enough play in it that when I really push the speakers, it would rattle this, and that rattle could be heard through the mic. So I put that tape on there and took care of that problem. All right, so here's my Crate GFX212 with the Eminence uh, speakers in it, which if you go back to the original Hole in the Wall video from seven years ago, you'll find out more about that. Okay, next is my, oh, good God, there we go, Ligator 6-string fan fret guitar and you've already seen a video of that so that's good here's my other pedal shelf across the room from the other one okay here and thank you Ola England for that idea I just thought that was a cool as hell thing to have but yeah I gotta give Ola props on that one so thanks Ola <laughs> all right uh, here's a Washburn uh, guitar I got from Lewis take a look at these inlays 
Doesn't that look cool? It's very different. Alright. And then here is another Squire uh, that I modified. And uh, Reshaped pick guard and so forth. Still haven't got the paint job on it yet, but it plays just fine. And it works well. Well, there's that. And here's the other ligator. The seven string I use for the videos with the uh, pedals. Let's see what that looks like. All right. Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. Yes, got to have that. All right. Here is my current pedal board layout. As you can see, I've got a couple pedals here. Slide this bench over. Uh, still got... Uh, this one right here to do a uh, video on with the seven string and that one right there to do a video on but this is the uh, the current layout with the gator board uh, which like I said that's a whole nother video uh, as far as that pedal board and what I'm going to do. And here is the replacement uh, pedal board for the Gator. So it's a rock board. Switch this around for you. So it's a rock board. Model is. The 5.3, I only got one size bigger than that, but I figured the 5.3 is big enough. Which, again, that's part of another video. Okay, so, let me get back here and just kind of give you the lay of the land. See what's what here. Oh yeah, there's a tripod. I put the camera on when I'm shooting the videos. Yes, yeah, cables everywhere. Ah, fun stuff. Uh, let's see. One more thing I want to point out. This particular picture. You know, I like it looks cool but if you really look at it there's a major problem with this I'll give you a hint look at the neck look at that neck real close to where that 12th fret is and you can figure out what the problem is obviously this wasn't uh, made up by an actual guitarist okay now you notice these lanterns they're solar powered so basically I just take them outside light them up or uh, let them charge up all day bring them in put them back on the walls and then uh, turn them on have the pedal board on and if you hold up about I don't know 15 seconds or so uh, you'll see the same room lit up at night so don't go nowhere. All right.